Hello, everyone. We'll give everyone a few moments to log on and join us. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. We still have people logging on, so we will wait a few more moments. Okay, we are going to get started. Hello everyone and welcome to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary's Stay at Home Speaker Series. Today's program is Highlights of Rapture Migration in Colombia, Findings and Challenges with Esther Vallejo, Founder and Project Coordinator of Conservación de Rapaces Migratorias, Founder of Tropicos Colombia, and Hawk Mountain Conservation Science Trainee from Autumn 2019. Welcome, Esther. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you very much for inviting me. We're so glad that you're here. My name is Jamie Dawson, and I'm the Director of Education at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. And we're so glad that everyone is able to join us today. As you may know, Hawk Mountain is the world's very first refuge for birds of prey. And we continue to work hard to be leaders in raptor conservation, science, and education locally and globally around the world. Hawk Mountain is a private nonprofit and membership is the lifeblood of our organization. To all of our members, thank you, muchas gracias, for all of your support. It means so much to us. And if you're joining us today and you're not a member, we hope that you consider becoming one in the future. Hawk Mountain hopes that everyone remains safe and healthy during these times of COVID challenges. And we are so excited to offer our local and global community a variety of free virtual programming. And as always, Hawk Mountain greatly appreciates and depends on donations. Just so everyone is aware, today's program is being recorded. The video will then be accessible on Hawk Mountain's YouTube channel as a continued resource. We also have a link on our website directly connecting you to our YouTube channel. At any point during today's program, viewers may submit questions through the Q&A feature on the Zoom platform. We designate a time at the end of the program to take some questions from the audience. And we are so excited that Esther Vallejo is joining us all the way from Colombia um, to share with us the very important raptor conservation work she is doing. And I'd like to take a moment to share some of Esther's background experience with our audience. Esther is a biologist from Universidad del Valle with experience in wildlife management, conservation, consulting, and environmental education with a focus on birds. Esther has initiated a new raptor count site in Colombia and serves as the project coordinator for Conservación de Rapaces Migratores. Colombia, or in English, uh, the Conservation of Migrating Raptors, Colombia. She is the founder of Tropicos Colombia, an NGO created with the aim of developing conservation initiatives. Esther, I know I've told you this before, but I, on behalf of Hawk Mountain, we are all so proud of you and all this amazing work that you are doing uh, to conserve um, raptors in Colombia and, and beyond. It's amazing. Thank you. You are truly a force of nature. Um, so what inspired you uh, to become a leader in the field of raptor conservation? Wow. <laughs> well, um, I think everything started when I was an counter assistant in Veracruz River of Raptors in 2017. And I was a little lost. I mean, I didn't know that I was in the biggest migration in the planet like yeah I, I didn't know in that moment the, the meaning you know but I started to to see all these uh, things like the, this big migration and everything and I was like just oh my god what is this so I this that was my first experience with um, migration with migrating raptors so I was so interested in the in this matter and and then, well, I started to wonder what is going on in Colombia, you know, like, what do we know about migration? Uh, all these birds are passing through Mexico and what's next, you know? 
So um, then I discovered Hawk Mountain Sanctuary through Veracruz River of Raptors. And also at the same time, I discovered that we had um, hunting problems here in Colombia. So it was like a signal of the universe. I don't know. <laughs> because I knew about this problem in Colombia and at the same time I hear about Hawk Mountain and all the history about Hawk Mountain how it started because Hawk Mountain had this um, big issue of hunting too like it's the same huh and you could do something about it so I thought we could do something about it too and that's the way I started this path actually <laughs> Wonderful. And the rest is history and who knows what the future holds. Yeah. Esther, can you tell us a little bit more about how your experiences at Hawk Mountain in 2019 prepared you or impact your current work today in Colombia? Yeah, sure. Um, as you said, I was a conservation science trainee um, in 2019. And this was uh, really important for this project because uh, that the, was the moment when I planned everything with the help of people from Hawk Mountain. And I had the opportunity to, you know, like um, have a better idea of how, how to do it, you know? Because after my experience in Veracruz, I, I was able to watch the migration in Colombia and, and I started to count it and like, okay, and what's next, what, what should I do with this? information you know so with that opportunity I was able to put everything together and now is the reality <laughs> amazing and Esther you actually were featured for Hawk Mountain's very first ever stay at home speaker series in April 2020 uh, when the whole world changed and yeah. I was discovering zoom what is zoom <laughs> so <laughs> that's when it all started and here we are uh you know, getting close to two years later. Now, um, the next thing I wanted to ask you, Esther, is a little bird told me that you were featured in a new book that was recently published in 2021. And I'm going to embarrass Esther now. I'm gonna share my screen with some photos, <laughs> if I may. Um, can you all see that? Let me. So um, here's this wonderful book, Female Heroes of Bird Conservation. And Esther, you are featured here. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about this book and your involvement in it? What an honor, by the way. Congratulations. What a huge honor. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm so happy about it. And actually, I have it right here. Yay! Yay. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a book from Rosemary Lowe, and she's a parrot enthusiastic. Um, so she started to do like interviews of people uh, helping parrots and she started to notice that um, mo most of the people were female so she that's the way the idea came to her and she created this book Female Heroes in it's really good very inspirational for these new generations and yeah it's it's amazing well, congratulations. And you know, us at Hawk Mountain, we are all about um, female leaders in raptor conservation. Rosalie yeah. Ed, Dr. Lori Goodrich, Esther Vallejo, um, <laughs> so congratulations. And to everyone watching, um, after the program, I'll send a link if anyone's interested uh, to purchase that book. So other exciting news, Esther, I also heard that you have a trip coming up soon and that you will be traveling to Nicaragua, perhaps doing some important conservation work there. Would you mind telling us a bit about your trip and what you're going to be doing? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, this is a roofer meeting for the roofer foundation. And actually, they um, uh, help us with the uh, spring 2021 uh, with um, their grant. So it was very important. So now this is the opportunity to share with them the results of this um, uh, research. So I'm pretty excited to be there. That's yeah. amazing. Congratulations. You're, you're doing you. so many wonderful things. Thank you. Well, Esther, I'm I know you have a lot of information to share from the new count site that you initiated yeah. in Colombia. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, I'm going to share my screen right now.
Okay, can you see it? Looks perfect. Okay, so well, yeah, um, we already have two years of findings and challenges in this project. So I want to share with all of you. Thank you for joining us. And I would like to start um, telling you why we start this project. Well, I already say something about it, but the main reasons are this. Um, Colombia is part of the Mesoamerican Land Corridor that we can see right here. And in Colombia is here. So Colombia is a strategic place for monitoring migration. Um, but at the same time, uh, we have scarce information, not just from Colombia, but also from uh, South America in general. Um, actually, you can see here the information we have, the published information we had for Colombia. So as you can see, is uh, just for uh, some years, and we have a lot of gaps of information for many years. And also we had some information that haven't been published, but um, it's very important because we already know um, some places where all the migration is, is coming, but um, more information is needed, definitely. Um, these past efforts sadly couldn't continue over time. So we need more information of all, all this migration route. And also we don't have uh, enough people train it to has counters, raptor counters in, in the country. And at the same time, Colombia harbors some of the top human threats to raptors, including illegal hunting. And despite the efforts of different organizations and, and the government too, because this is completely illegal, the hunting is still happening. And these are the reasons why this project came to life, Conservación de Aves Rapaces Migratorias Colombia, and these are the objectives. Uh, train the locals in raptor ID and counts, identify two counting sites, collect roosting and hooding, uh, hunting site data, uh, strengthen education, promote tourism. And this is, it was the reason why I create Tropicos Colombia, this NGO to manage um, all this project and try to achieve these objectives. So this is the summary of the 2020. Um, we achieve a lot of these uh, objectives and I'm going to show you more about it in the next slides. So we identified two different areas for raptor counts in Colombia, surveying uh, the autumn and spring. So we started um, on spring 2020 in Tolima. Uh, this is central Colombia and this is the place where all the hunting, the illegal hunting was happening or we have the information about it. And we found more than 400,000 individuals of eight different species. And this was huge for us because we didn't have any information for this area uh, at that point. Um, so 400 was like a lot for us. I mean, I wasn't expecting that number at all because first is spring, like the, the numbers are low in that moment uh, in general in the different count sites. And at the same time, it's central Colombia, so it's, um, it's not very like northwest of the country where all the migration is coming. But um, uh, we had these great numbers. So it was a really big surprise for us. And after that, we moved um, further north in Antioquia for the autumn 2020. And here we found more than 600,000 individuals of 14 different species. As you may notice already, uh, the fall has more diversity um, and we, was, we were expecting that. Uh, the most abundant species for spring was the broadwing hawk and for the autumn was the Swainson's hawk. We also had um, different interesting records as for example, the red tail hawk. And actually this was uh, first recorded the first time in Colombia uh, was um, by also former trainees from Hawk Mountain, indeed. And we also will see these uh, individuals in the count site. Well, about the timing, we found that for spring, um, we had this more like um, concentrate migration in just one week. We had almost 80% of the migration in, in that week. 
And for March 15, we had the peak of migration with almost 65,000 individuals for that single day. In the autumn, you can notice that the migration is more spread. Um, in, in the season, with around three weeks of big days. And the peak of migration was on October 22. Um, okay, so we identified 12 important raptor roosting sites and five priority conservation areas where hunting is occurring. And this was possible thanks to a network that we create with the community where um, they were able to share with us the information about um, raptors arriving to their lands to roost and also hunting activity. And also from the data collected in the count site from early morning and the sunset. So this is the information we got. And in the yellow dots, you can see the roosting sites um, at the beginning. Well, the information we had from the community is that uh, the raptors were roosting in the mountains that you cannot see it very well in the map, but it is all this far in the north. But we also found that um, really close from the count side, we found swinesons and broadwing hawks roosting in the valley. So the mountains and also the valley are really important for uh, roosting uh, migratory raptors. And in the red dots, you can see the hunting activity. And I think you can notice that uh, all this hunting activity is concentrated here in this area. This is the Conveyma Canyon where all the, the hunting is occurring. And in that season, we were able to have this proof of uh, this information that this is still happening. Uh, for the autumn, we also had some information about roosting sites and the area where we were exploring Antioquia also is used for the swine zones and broadwing hawks. We trained local people in raptor ID and migration in general. And at that point, we didn't have any issue with the COVID crisis. So we were able to have this meeting with uh, local people and then share with them information and practice their new skills in the field with uh, expert raptor counters from Veracruz River of Raptors. But then, well, all, all the crisis started and we continue with virtual meetings and um, like to encourage them to continue their observations from home. For Antioquia, it was um, more complicated uh, because all the restrictions continued in that moment, but we were able to contact a local group um, uh, working on conservation and they were able to receive this information. Um, we also contribute to education and outreach about raptors. Uh, we started with the, material, the materials from Hog Mountain Sanctuary and we adapted to the reality, the local reality. And with the um, Ornithological Association of Tolima and Tocefala, we were able to do some visits uh, before the, all the crisis started. Uh, but for the autumn, as I was mentioning, it was more complicated. So we just used posters to deliver in the different places uh, close to the count site. Uh, at the same time, we continue with um, other ways to share information um, with interviews and meetings before the crisis and also with social media, etc. Okay, so for the 2021, we also had spring and autumn migration. For the spring, we had the second season for the Lima Raptor count. And for the autumn, we have um, the count, the migration monitoring, but also we do uh, we did an exploration in Central Colombia. So let's start with the Lima Raptor count. Um, it's located right here in Central Colombia, as I mentioned, and it's located in Ibagué, in the southeast of the city, that is the capital of this department. 
uh, we started in February, mid February, and ended in mid April. So we found more than 600,000 individuals in this occasion of 10 different migrating raptor species. Um, the most abundant species was broadwing hawk, followed by Swainson's hawk. And we had, uh, we obtained two new records of migrating raptors in the area compared with the records from 2020, the Merlin and Hogbill kite. And I don't know if you notice it, but for 2020, we had 400,000, around 400,000. And for 2021, 600,000. So this is more than 200,000 additional individuals for the town site. This could be because uh, for the 2020, uh, we did the observations from a building due to the pandemic crisis. Um, and maybe we couldn't have this gray view to the east. So probably those groups moving through the valley in the east were lost. Um, and for 2021, we had this amazing view from the count site. So it, it is possible. However, we also found differences on the weather conditions. So we need to know more and do more seasons to, to observe what's going on. So that's why it's very excited this um, new season that we're going to have. Okay, so for uh, the timing, we found um, that the peak of migration was on March 19. Mm, but this was different for from spring 2020 because as you can, I don't know if you remember that I was saying like the spring 2020 was very concentrated migration in a week, but in this case was just in a single day because we recorded more than 200,000 individuals and that means that that was the third part of all recorded hawks for the season in a single day. So um, before this day, we had several days of rains. So it is possible that the migration peak is due to the conglomeration of these birds um, in the south of the count site trying to, to um, wait in for good weather to continue the movement. The, the movement toward the north. And as for the year 2021, we had um, a cooling pattern phenomena and we had more rainy days compared to 2020. So um, this could be related. Okay, so we continue the training uh, with the locals that participate from the last year, reinforcing their knowledge, the, um, the skills, and the workshop was virtual, as you can see here. And after that, we planned uh, field practices, very carefully scheduled to avoid crowds at the study site. And at the same time, we create something like the um, Migratory Raptors Day that was in 21st, uh, March 21st. And this was uh, for like trying to encourage people from different regions in the country to watch the migration in this single day. And that is why we developed, developed a shorter version of the workshop and share with birders of the country in general. Okay, so for the roosting sites and shooting records, we also obtained different results compared with spring 2020 because, uh, well, we continue the online network with community developed the last year, I mean, the 2020, um, and no report of roosting or shooting was received in their uh, lands. So um, this was very similar to our observations from the count side because we just saw um, roosting behavior in, on March, 18, a day before the peak of migration, with around 10,000 individuals of Broadwings and Swainson's Hub. Um, so at the same time, we rec almost all the migration recorded for that season 
was through the um, east in the valleys. So the raptors didn't use um, the area that I already show you of the Combeima Canyon. So if they didn't use that path, th that path, well, they weren't hunted because of that. So yeah. Um, okay, so for education and outreach, almost all of it was virtual. Um, we create these virtual programs and this facilitated like the dissemination of the information to the schools. But at the same time, this led us to an unexpected positive outcome covering schools, not only in the study area, but also in other regions of Colombia. So that was very positive. And we also partnered it with local organizations, the Ornithological um, Association from Colombia and from Tolima to create this poster that you can see here. And then we share it with um, Colombian educators. And they were also part of the migratory raptor day. Okay, so for the autumn 2021, um, we had this um, two different um, activities. We had a main observation point of two months in Cundinamarca, uh, that is central Colombia, a place that was also recorded as um, uh, with hunting activity. Um, and we did some explorations in the time of the peak of migration uh, between mid-October weeks uh, for three different departments, Caldas, Tolima, and Cundinamarca. And we also continue with the network uh, with the community in Tolima. So let's talk about the main observation point that was um, uh, in Western Cundinamarca, que, um, that is called San Juan de Rio Seco. So this is an important area for conservation because as I already mentioned, it has also hunting activity. We didn't know about it till the, the last year. So I decided to go there and, and check that information. And for this area, we, we do have some baseline uh, in 2008, 6,000 individuals of migrating raptors were recorded for this region. So we found this. We recorded nine different species of migrating raptors with 200,000 individuals. Uh, it, it cannot be compared with the baseline because we uh, they did um, just a few days of effort and we were in the fall season. Um, as you can see here in the graphic, we have the peak of migration on 2nd November with more than 70,000 individuals in that single day. But most of the individuals were observed between the 5th and 25th of November. Okay, so about the roosting sites and shooting records, uh, we identified seven roosting areas uh, close from the count site and two localities were identified as shooting areas in Cundinamarca. Um, according to the conversations we had with community, locals are aware about auto migration and also about the hunting activity. Um, these results, coincides with the spring 2021 with no report of roosting or shooting received. Um, so we are not very sure if COVID affect this activity, but we also have um, some information from local people saying that actually they don't see the migration at all for the autumn. So we had this big question because locals in the central Andes are saying that the migration is not observed in the autumn. And then we talk with the people from the East Andes and they say the opposite, like we saw the migration on autumn and not in spring. So we wanted to know more 
about what's going on in this area of the country. And that is why um, we decided to do these explorations in Central Colombia. So to have a better idea, here we have the three different observation points we, we did. Um, here you can see uh, Central Andes, and this is the, the place, um, one of the places we visited. Um, in Caldas, we had 2,000 individuals. And um, this is an area uh, that we can find a big city there, Manizales, and it's in the middle of this um, mountain range. And uh, okay, so also we monitor not just central um, Andes, but also East Andes. And um, between these two mountain ranges, we have this valley, the Magdalena River Valley. So we monitor these uh, three different places. And as you can notice in the numbers, well, um, the most abundant migration was in the valley, in the Magdalena River Valley. But we can also observe migration coming through the mountain ranges. So let's see a little more about it. So this is the information for the, the Magdalena River Valley. We find deep, found different species, nine different species, with more than 600,000 individuals for this area. The most abundant species was Swainson's. And something interesting happened, happened with Mississippi kite. Uh, it should be noted that this is the first time we have registered such a large number of this species during the two years of project. Um, and probably this species uh, all, always migrate, migrate through the valley, so we couldn't notice before because uh, the count side, the Tolima Raptor count is located more in the west of the valley. So this place, this new place in, is right in the middle of the valley. So um, this was um, a great number for Mississippi kites. And actually we observed in a single day, almost 600,000, six, sorry, 60,000. Okay, so for timing, we observed um, that the peak of migration was on October 20 with more than 170,000 individuals in that single day. This little peak we can see here are the Mississippis, actually. Okay, and for Caldas, we found um, just 2,000 individuals of four different species. Um, but what happened here was that most of the time we had cloudy days, with some rains um, and maybe the low numbers could be explained for the poor weather conditions in the area. And also we had some rec records of, um, from locals saying, like reporting the migration after we left uh, this area. So maybe they have a bigger migration after, after we visited the, the area. Okay, so we continue with the training. Uh, we perform a virtual meeting, uh, talking again about migrating raptor ID. Uh, and we had the participation in the count side of the 2020 trainee people and also um, new volunteers um, trying to learn more about raptor migration. So they had the opportunity to learn in, in the field. For education, well, a partial no normality has returned to Colombia post-pandemic and kids are now going to the schools. So we were able to carry out two virtual meetings for educators first, and after that, 19 education visits. So we were able to develop different activities in addition to the talks and presentations like um, small craft projects, playful activities, and bear watching. Uh, at the same time, we had um, a school really close from the count site. So some of the students were to the count site 
to watch the migration and also people from the community in general. So these activities reached more than 300 children, young and, uh, young and adults in Cundinamarca and Tolima. Mm, okay, so for the outreach activities, uh, we continue with the social media posting, promoting raptor conservation. We also week, uh, they did weekly updates about the count data we collected. Um, information was shared widely through several media, like talks, interviews, printed materials, also with the ornithological associations. And we also participate in the South American Bear Fair that you can see here. Um, and we had a final activity with the community in Cundinamarca, where they participate in the creation of a mural about migration and raptors, as you can see here. So in conclusion for 2021, uh, we were able to explore Central Colombia and we did the uh, spring and autumn monitoring. And because of that, we already have a better understanding of autumn migration in Central Colombia finding that the most of the raptors migration in Central Colombia um, in the autumn 2021 moved through the Magdalena River Valley between the Central and the East Andes. Um, also, West Cundinamarca is a key area for raptor conservation, has also the Combema Canyon in Tolima, so more outreach and education visits are needed in those regions to address shooting. We continued the training of locals and we hope to continue with it and to have um, um, raptor counters in the future. So um, we look forward to con continuing these efforts, addressing the questions that arise each season and promote hog migration, uh, sorry, hog and bear watching rather than shooting and appreciation rather than persecution. So we are very excited about spring 2022 and we are seeking for more answers. Um, and yeah, we are already getting ready for it. So we have been supported by different entities, local, international. And I would like to say thank you to all of them, also private donors and donors from our GoFundMe campaign. So thank you very much to all of them and thank you for joining us. If you want to know more about this project, you can do it through our social media. Uh, you can find us on Facebook like Conservación de Rapaces Migratorias Colombia and on Instagram like Migración Rapaces Com. And also here's the email tropicoscolombia gmail.com. And you also can scan our QR code that is right here um, for our GoFundMe campaign. So thank you very much. Esther, you are amazing. Um, the work you're doing is incredible. I'm so impressed and I'm sure the audience is as well. And so for everyone watching, um, just so you're aware, after the program, I'm going to be sending out an email blast through TicketLeap, Hawk Mountain TicketLeap, and it's going to have the links to um, Esther's GoFundMe. If you want to help support this really important conservation work for raptors in such an important bottleneck area. Um, we have her link to her Facebook, her GoFundMe, and also we'll include the link to that awesome book, <laughs> um, Women, Heroes, and Bird Conservation. And actually, Esther, I'm wondering if um, during the Q&A, because we do have some awesome questions rolling in, do you want to keep that last slide up that has all that contact information and stuff? So it might yeah, be, sure. you know, just... Um, so, but I'm going to, I'm going to start delving into the questions. Are you okay with that? Yes, sure. Okay, great. All right. Got some good ones. Okay. Even though your conservation initiatives are new, do you think the results are having a positive impact in the local communities to encourage raptor appreciation and protection? And thank you for your dedication. You're an inspiration. No, thank you very much. Well, yeah, I think so, because uh, it is really nice to talk to local people and see their reactions like, oh, I didn't know that we have a lot of this diversity of birds, like 
they could have like an idea about it like yeah the the big one and the other one and that's it you know <laughs> but then with the posters and everything they they started to see the differences and it's like wow there are so so many difference and um, so yeah and also the numbers are something that like impact the people you know like they are really um, um, glad to know the numbers like wow all this migration is passing through our heads every year yeah so it has been a very positive attitude of local people about it that is such good news. That's that's what you want to hear. Um, so some more questions. First of all, I just want to read some comments to you. They're not questions, they're just comments. Sounds okay. like you're doing incredible work for Raptor Appreciation. Great presentation. Thank you for researching and protecting these wonderful birds. Your statistics are awesome. Okay, so here's Thank a question. You. What are the reasons for hunting raptors? Is it just sharpshooting? Is it that they think the raptors are killing a prey that they are protecting? Why do they think raptors need to be shot? Is it cultural beliefs? That's a really good question. Yeah, well, there are different reasons. Um, first, it's something cultural. Um, they already know about migration. And in the case of Tolima, the, the raptors are arriving just in the time of the, um, I, I don't remember the, the name of the this festi festivity in English, uh, but um, hmm. yeah, I don't remember it, but it's a religious one. So the people believe that they arrive, so they have to um, use this and the, the land is going to be going to pass very fast. Something like that is, doesn't make any sense, but the people believe that, you know? Uh, at the same time, um, the people consume, uh, like to, to eat raptors. Um, I, I don't know, they say they taste funny, <laughs> but still they are doing it, you know? I don't know why. Um, and at the same time, they believe that um, the, the fat of the bodies has curative powers for some, yeah, for some diseases. <laughs> So yeah, that, that are the reasons. Very interesting. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, so the next question is also related to the hunting. Um, and I know you said that you've already noticed some positive impacts on, on the from the work you're doing, which is great. How are the locals receiving your efforts to stop the hunting? How has it been changing hearts and minds? And then you are the best. Great presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it has been a little difficult to, to get the, to the people. I mean, we have been working with kids um, mostly in the schools and yeah, but not there directly with the hunters because the people is not like very open to talk about it because they know it's an illegal thing. So it's not like, yeah, I'm a hunter and hello. No, that is not go going on. So, but we are working with kids and the idea is to um, um, touch more people with these activities, like for, for example, the mural and everything. So I know the hunters are there, but <laughs> we don't know who they are or something. So. Yeah, we have to explore more that. So that's the reason I would like to work with education uh, through the whole year to get to know the community and what are the, their activities and, and try to involve more with them. So that, that process is going to be slow, but we, we want to and we're going to continue, yeah. Wow, wonderful, such, such important work. And um, you know, many people watching may know that the raptors that we love to see you know, at Hawk Mountain passing through, passing by North Lookout are some of the same raptors, uh, Esther, that you're seeing in Columbia, particularly our beloved Broadwing Hawks. And um, yeah. so important that you know, um, 
the work you're doing to protect them because, you know, it's great that the raptors aren't being hunted anymore at Hawk Mountain, but, you know, migration can be a perilous journey and uh, it, it's all connected. We're all connected uh, through raptor migration. Yeah the corridor. Um, the uh, other questions coming in are also about hunting, but I feel maybe this one was typed before you had answered a previous question. I, I think you already answered it, but I'll read it anyway in case you want to add a little something more. Yeah. Starting off with great work, Esther. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is the dominant reason for hunters to hunt raptor migration? Was it for sport or did they have a miss? Uh, perception of the raptors. Again, I know we touched on this, but maybe, you know, someone didn't hear when you said that. Okay. Yeah. As I mentioned, it's most cultural. They also eat the raptors, but it's because like it's a tradition in the community. And also it's like um, a sport activity there. But yeah, the main reason is cultural. So we have to change that mindset. Thank you, Esther. Okay, another question. Um, what is the most uh, popular or the favorite uh, raptor when you are teaching the kids in the areas? What do, which raptor do the kids really that say, oh. Oh, that's amazing? <laughs> well, oh, that's hard. Maybe the swineson, I think. Nice. Yeah, because they, they can like recognize it really easy like oh it's the one with ban oh yeah so yeah but the most popular one is actually let me show you just that's even better show us Okay, I'm back. The most popular one is this one. Ah, <laughs> nice. Everybody <laughs> love it. I mean, it has been, wow, a success in oh, our education visits. It's like, yeah, that's everybody it. wants one of these. <laughs> so Esther, I think I know what that is, but I'm wondering, I'm, the viewers may not know what that is. Do you want to explain? Yeah, sure. Just give me a second please <laughs> and well um okay this is in theory a red tail hog <laughs> and this was from hog mountain sanctuary and so this one this one is um one of the materials that i uh, bring here to colombia for education so uh, i also have um a turkey vulture, but the, mo the most popular one is this one. <laughs> so yeah, it has been really um, important for us. Uh, this kind of helps for our education visits because we had all the attention, the attention of the kids. So thank you very much, Hawk Mountain, for that. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's our pleasure. If you want more stuffed animal raptors, you just say the word. <laughs> we'll send them. <laughs> Um, we actually use those stuffed animals when we're doing trainings, like, you know, before we'll, we'll do like, um, the live bird, if we have a, a new trainee coming in, we'll have them practice on, uh, on, on the stuffed animal. Well, thank you so much, Esther. Okay. Thank we have you. one more question. Um, uh, during these mass migrations, are there injured birds found? And if so, are there wildlife rehabilitators in Colombia? Mm, good question. Well. I haven't heard about um, um, this issue, but uh, I know about an organization here in Colombia, but it's just one in, in a little town. So it's not, not very spread this um, uh, rehabilitation of raptors or birds in general. Um, but yeah, we, we have this, um, this organization, but I think we need more efforts about it. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. We love our wildlife rehabilitators at Hawk Mountain. And that's actually where we acquire many of our live raptor ambassadors that we work with on our education team from wildlife oh. rehabilitators when the birds are, are deemed non-releasable. Um, yeah. That was a great question. And I think that's all the questions for now. Esther, 
Wow. You're amazing. Um, an inspiration for sure. The audience has said it many times and I am echoing their sentiments. Thank you so very much for your dedication and hard work and passion uh, for protecting these birds and studying them and, and educating the public. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we salute you. Um, thank you to everyone in our audience for joining us. Uh, it really means their world uh, to us that you're interested. And again, I'll be sending emails out with links to the Esther's uh, GoFundMe for the project and the Facebook. And I always like to end by sharing some of our upcoming programs that we have at Hawk Mountain, because we would love to see you if possible um, at Hawk Mountain. And Esther, I want to see you back at Hawk Mountain too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to go. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have so many programs coming up in February. We really have a lot going on. Um, we are starting our Winter Artisan Series the first weekend in February, and it's in collaboration with the Arts Barn. And it's every weekend from February all the way through March and the first weekend in April, we're collaborating with local Pennsylvania artists. They're teaching really cool artisan classes on site. And by participating in this series, you are supporting Bradford Conservation. Um, we have our... We Ones Walk for Young Kids, uh, Fossil Fun on the 2nd of February. Um, so February 5th and 6th, um, we have Scouts BSA Trail Days. So if you register your scout group before January 28th, you save 50% on trail fees. On February 6th, we have Boilo, the Coal Miner's Cure. On February 12th, we have an Owl Prowl. That's always very popular. On February 13th, we have Wild Love to celebrate Valentine's Day. We're gonna talk about how some of our wildlife uh, celebrate their love. Uh, then we also have Hearts for Hawks um, throughout Valentine's Day weekend, the 12th and the 13th. And you can always check out our website for more details about these events. On February 16th, we have Homeschool Happenings, Sensory Safari. Then moving into our stay at home speaker series for February, we have two and they're both on snowy owls. February 17th, we have uncovering the mysteries of the snowy owl south of the tundra with Dr. Rebecca McCabe, who's part of our Hawk Mountain team. On February 19th, we have meet our farmland raptors. That's a free program on site with live birds, some of our newest feathered educators representing our farmland raptor species. Um, on uh, February 19th to 20th, we have Common Winter Feeder Bird ID. And then finally, the 24th of February, we have our stay at home speaker series, Movements and Habitat Use of Wintering Snowy Owls. So that's it for February. Um, please uh, come check us out and thank you so much. Um, bye for now. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Oh my gosh, our pleasure. Thank you for everything.